Hey guys, now I'm a little bit more energetic than I was recent shave. And so I am bringing you the Declaration B9A again, and it has a hook oration or a bristle brushworks handle. Found it pretty ergonomic last time I used it. And then I'll be using the Nasset as usual. Since the Fatip long running razor that I um, enjoyed, and then I transitioned into, I found another razor, the Fat Boy, that has been a good razor to use with this blade, this old high use blade, and not at its highest setting, which I thought is what I needed to do and maybe was what I needed to do a hundred or two hundred shaves ago. I was shaving with it at a three and a four. So I thought, well, what if we revisited a razor like the car of Christopher Bradley, and instead of getting, getting the base plate for a really high gap, let's back it on down to something more reasonable and see if the same thing happens with the carve that happened with the Fat Boy, in that a setting that's a typical setting will work, as opposed to going crazy with the aggression. So that's what we're going to give a shot uh, with this D plate. I like the C um, better than the D. It has better comfort and pretty much the same efficiency, the same close cutting action. And, uh, but the D is, is a pretty good one too. So I figured let's try the D. Then the star of today's shave is Firefighter, a soap from Noble Otter, and it's a benefit soap. And uh, Red Cross is one of the benefits, um, one of the charities that is re receiving a little bit of the proceeds. And the other one is um, a Fallen Firefighters Association or some type of organization um, uh, for those folks who are out there battling the Pacific Northwest inferno, all the fire, uh, the forest fires that are going on out there. Uh, I think last year, 2019, as well as 2020, if memory serves correctly, I'm sorry to say I don't keep uh, a constant, very, I don't keep a very reliable watch on that kind of news, I'm afraid. Um, it is an aquatic scent with light woodsy notes is the summary that Noble Otter had on their website. I've seen other sites say that this is a V3, their V3 base. Now, last time I looked, they only had two. They had the one they initially came out with, then they redid their base, and it was really awesome. Now, did I miss one somewhere? I don't know. I'm going to have to find out about that. But I can look into my other ones and see if the uh, order of the ingredients is the same. That should work. That should work. All right, so uh, we're going to try No Water and Firefighter. Uh, and I bought it brand new. And it's very flat. So obviously it was poured in here pretty warm. And so it settled down. You definitely pick up the aquatic notes. Now, to me, the aquatic is there, but the, the woody notes are not hints. They're not light. They're really nipping at the heels of the aquatic in a pretty significant way. I think they're almost a blended, almost blended at, in equal parts, but the aquatic does seem to be a little bit more. The woodiness is on the dry puck here, of course, is, uh, is that red cedar type note. It's not a, like an oak type of woodiness. The, uh, we'll go over the exact notes like grapefruit and lavender and some of the others once we get to mixing it in the bowl. All right, so let us load up and the shake does not hold a lot of water. I had this brush soak for an hour before this because the tips just weren't all that soft the first time I used it. So I figured let's try something different. All right. 
So um, it's a brand new puck. Sometimes that means we need to load for longer. I want to try a 40 second load. 30 seconds is sometimes my standard when I don't know. But since this is a new puck, um, probably set curing for a while. Let's try 40 seconds. It may be overkill, but that's all right. And the 20 rolled around there. And so I went ahead and jumped on that. So it'll be nice and easy to remember that the zero mark is where I need to stop. It did start pulling up suds pretty quickly. So I'm going to guess I'm kind of overloading, but let's just go for it anyway. This light pressure, you can't really put down tons of pressure with this knot. It's just so big. Um, and, and it's got a lot of backbone. Okay, there we go. 40, 40 seconds. That's how it looks. Plenty of water. I shook out a lot of water. There was still plenty to be dripping off the tub here, right? And we have the count card for the blade. Today is 353 uses. And then I'll show you the, the fade. Three dots there help to show you that it's the same one that I've been using the whole time. So here's that D plate and you can see the patina. I did use some Brasso to give the top cap here a, a polish. I like that. Kind of like the two-tone look. The bead blasted finish is the standard finish. This is a Gladius handle. I, um, I like the original handle as well. I'm going to use the Gladius for a while, see if I like it better. All right clamps down nice and firm and there's the D and let's get my face wet all right we have panned you down and we'll just see if this knot will give me a better experience than the first time I used it which was yesterday just so much density. The hair just couldn't get out of the way. It didn't really splay as I was using it and the tips weren't super soft. They were nice. I can feel the density right now as I'm working it in the bowl. I don't know if the soak has going to have any effect at all. That's why we experiment. Now the notes in the firefighter, they were careful to put in the article, the write-up for the soap on the Noble Otter website that this scent does not have any fire or burning type elements in it. And it's one of those duh moments where I realize, wow, that, that might be how I, I might have done it, but clearer heads prevailed and that would have been obviously very insensitive. With just one teaspoon of water I'm not getting a ton of lather building up here and it's not super uh, it's staying pretty low. Um, it could be that this base is more of a low structure gluey kind of base maybe similar to the excelsior or milk state i may end up having to go back to the puck for more soap let's go ahead and put another teaspoon in and just see what happens so two teaspoons total now As more soap gets up in between the bore 
uh, the bristles, you, I can feel it start to open up a little bit. You know, a note that I'm actually picking up on is black licorice. And I don't know if that's just a sum of the parts kind of thing, because anise is not in the list. Uh, speaking of that, we're looking at a scent list of grapefruit, lavender, red cedarwood, water, sandalwood, and ambergris. Oh good, look, the uh, lather's starting to come up a little bit more. So obviously we had some soap in the brush that needed, needed that water. The hairs in this knot will open up a little bit more with use. The side ones will come out more to the side and free up a little space. But to be honest, there was so much backbone due to density that I don't think it's going to be enough. So I hope that something else changes regarding the knot. You know what, knowing the way the bases are going these days, I might say that we should just try this guy. A, a really thin lather also does not put a dense higher backbone brush in its best light as well. So that le lets me also strongly consider not adding more water. We do have three teaspoons in the lather so far, and that is a decent amount for many soaps. So. Let's just see what happens if we go ahead and use this water as is. Uh, splash a little bit of face. A little bit of face on my water. All right. Are you tilted a little bit? I think you are. Let's see what happens here. This is a 28 millimeter knot, so it is purposefully large. And so what I may discover is that if it's a knot with the kind of density that Scott likes to put out, then maybe the 28 just stuffs the hairs, stuffs too many hairs into one spot so that I don't enjoy it as much. But before I make that a solid conclusion i'm going to use it i i am noticing a little difference in the way it feels on my face but not a lot i still definitely feel like when i'm changing directions i kind of feel the the hairs not really wanting to bend out of the way and so i feel them uh, like here i'm going this direction then i reverse then they kind of shove into my skin as they switch and flop the other way Now look, we're getting some lather built up on the side there. And so what I'm going to do add some water because I am getting the lather built up around my goatee and the, you know, the side areas. So it looks like we can add some more water to our lather. Brush feels pretty good. If it wasn't for that, that flex thing that I was showing you about where it, it shoves into me when I change directions, I would be, I would really enjoy the knot. 
but we'll see that if that activity keeps going or if it settles down into something else. Yeah, see, even right now when I push it against me and then move down, there's an initial shove of my skin up. I don't know if you can see that. It's not really all that enjoyable. And perhaps a 24 millimeter B9A might not have the density. Get some of this excess out. And I was concerned in the beginning if I'd have enough lather, but obviously there was a lot in the brush that we didn't see. And let me uh, clean up here. All right, I haven't shaved with the card in a couple weeks. Now this is high use blade, three hundred and fifty third shave. And we're going to try it out with the D plate of the car of Christopher Bradley Razor. Pretty well so far. A little bit of tugging. This seems to be moving through the hair. Sometimes I change my angle when it's a blade that has a lot of uses I have a I'll often open up the handle try on this show you on this side and where maybe this might be my normal angle I might open it up just a little bit more ride the cap a little more to help the blade out that that seems to help the blade out Pass down. Well, that soap base, soap base felt very good on my skin. The rinses felt nice. Now, what I'm going to try to pay attention to now, I'm going to add a little bit more water to the bowl here. What I'm going to pay attention to now is the scent strength as I use it. When I've got the bowl up here and when I'm working it around my face, I feel like I get a decent shot of it uh not a not big time maybe four or five out of ten yeah see that i just added half a teaspoon i had added half a teaspoon during the uh, first lather and directly into the brush so now we're at a total of four teaspoons for this shave Yeah, that's a better lather. I'm, I'm really happy with the amount of lather that's being produced. That means that the, the new this new soap is economical in terms of giving you lots for your good value, you know, giving you lots of lather for your load time. Not experiencing any tugging this is pretty comfortable not uh, pulling or anything like that what it feels like is it's not really cutting all that well but it's kind of moving over the hairs but what that means is that the second pass here is just picking up more hairs than normally the second pass might. And then the third pass has to do a little bit more work than it usually does. Lather feels really good as consistency wise as it's kind of flopping off. Um, yeah, 
This is kind of like milk steak. It feels kind of it's a little slow. It feels buttery and kind of oily. Not quite as nice as how I like my lathers with uh, Williams and fine accoutrements and tobac and those soaps that really focus sterling. They focus on being a soap and not a moisturizer as much. I mean, this obviously will work and it feels nice, but it's just a little slow. All right, third pass. Pressing the brush with a density like this, I need to try to work some soap in between the bristles. Don't have to scrub on the second and third passes, but I'm just trying to get a feel for the brush, get work it out a little bit. You know, the density here with such a big knot, it's not splaying very much. And so I don't feel like it's an oversized brush for my face because, you know, I have the goatee. I don't need a huge splay. But it makes me wonder maybe uh, to tr take a, a nice silver tip that's got an easy backbone, easy splay, wonderful soft tips. And buy the 30 millimeter version. I mean, why not? Some of those are relatively cheap, the ones that I like. Um, at the bottom level, you got Virginia Ching silver tips. You've got um, a, a little bit higher, you know, you've got a Golden Nib, Whip Dog. Then you've got uh, Envy, uh, Elite, Elite, uh, Elite Razors with some really nice silver tips that are more expensive. Probably wouldn't go that route for the 30, but I might, I might try the, a 30 silver tip in one of the other makers. It'll be interesting to see how how that feels. All right, third pass. Now I'm starting to I'm starting to feel the the way it, it should feel like sometimes on the second pass. I feel like I've mowed down a good bit of hair and I'm going to end up with a nice shave. Because of high use blade, that just comes a little bit later for me when this type of scenario is going on. So do I feel like I need to go more aggressive than the D? I don't think so. I might try the C out tomorrow. I'll just grab a little bit of lather. And now we will switch directions in my trouble spot. This is not quite as smooth as some of my other options. But sometimes that results in a nice close shave. And we can just put in some hand lather. Don't have to get the brush out if you don't want to. And a little bit of touch up. And there we go. That sound is more like what we're used to hearing. Because the hair is pretty much gone and you're just kind of cleaning up. Being careful with my light touch since I'm shaving over this area a couple times. Yeah, it's a, a rich lather, a lot of viscosity, relatively speaking. And so that 
I didn't really feel it slowing down my razor. This is a, a heavy-ish razor, and so maybe that helps. But I feel the kind of thickness on my face with my fingers. Even as you can see, it's quite transparent and barely on there, but it's still... You know, now the good news is this is the same stuff that is nourishing your skin. If you have dry skin, then this kind of soap is probably what you want to use. But if you're like me and you have oily skin or average skin and you want a fast razor, then maybe this isn't quite as nice as some of the other soaps. Just spent a good bit of time rinsing and I'm going to assume that the intention for the soap is that you need to leave a little bit of it on your face. Trying to rinse until I get squeaky clean seems like it's going to take a really long time. <clears throat> I'm going to assume that you don't need to do that because the soap would have been washed away and what's left now hopefully is just the moisturizers, that's my guess. All right, I got soap kind of everywhere. But yeah, even right now, there's this kind of thin film uh, slickness that's that's still there. Let's check out the closeness. Uh, I see some length and a good many tips in my trouble spot here. And my face definitely felt like it had been shaved more than usual tenderness, that sort of thing, enough to make me not want to do another touch-up to try to get that. It's probably the razor. It's not a good match for this blade at this age. It's a wonderful match for the blade at a younger age, but this is not that. I guess it could be the kind of the viscosity of the lather, maybe, but I don't think so. Looks like maybe I won't try the C after all. I mean, I guess I could. I mean, why not? A little variety. Um, but yeah, I don't think the D is a, a good match for this blade at this age. All right, the, the scent strength. I am right now smelling it at maybe a three around me. I'm kind of impressed with that. It is subtle. You definitely get more of it when you stick your, your face in the bowl, obviously. Uh, it, it definitely isn't overpowering. It might bump up to a four when you're you know, putting it on and using it and having it right up on your face. Um, there you go, that's what's left after kind of three and a half passes. And I can probably do two more passes out of that. So. Looks like my guess for the soap was about right. Loading time. Um, we'll keep using the brush. It doesn't look like the, the uh, long soak did anything to the brush to help it out. Um, some badger brushes do change um, within the first two weeks or so of using them, and then they stabilize pretty much at that point. Uh, some never change. They're nice and soft and awesome in the very beginning and that never changes. Uh, so we'll just see what this guy does. He, my guess is he's just too dense for me. Um, I might like a B9A that um, is a 24 millimeter knot, perhaps. So we'll see. We shall see. I got the, I don't really feel like I need the balm after that soap. Matter of fact, the alcohol splash after that soap for me and my oily skin might actually be preferable to kind of break up that nourishment. But I figured I'd try Intrepid Man from from Sterling. It's got a sandalwood uh, type note. Let's just see. I think it's got some similar enough pieces now. As I was smelling the lather in the bowl, the, the different elements, they were, it's 
it's like you were mixing in odd ways. And so I was like, let's say you mix cinnamon, just picking things from out left field, cinnamon and birch wood. And you mix those in a soap. I'm getting actually a little bit of stinging here. Could I be allergic to an ingredient in this balm? I don't know. Normally, sterling balms do not do that to me at all. So, cinnamon and birch bark. When they collide and mesh, sometimes they stay separate and you smell them separately. Sometimes, however, they, they blend into something that doesn't really smell like what you think they should blend into. There was some soap, was it Promises by Barrister and Mann a couple of years ago? And it had some interesting notes in, in the scent list, but then when you actually smelled it, it was chewing tobacco, skull or something like that. It's exactly what it smelled like. But you don't see chewing tobacco in the list. It's just a, the blend added up to end up to be like that. So this scent did that to me a little bit. Oh, the intrepid man that's on me. It is masking now, as I smell the lather, it's masking those woody notes. The red cedar wood, the sandalwood, and I'm getting a major dose of the aquatic part of it. I love how the aftershave can change the way you smell the soap because of the different scents involved. Oh, hey, I wanted to say a couple of announcements. I'm going to do a separate video. Um, and the main one that I want to say is that fine accoutrements. I think I told you about this. Let's just say it anyway. Um, in the beginning of the video, I thought I, I mentioned it, but the, the factory uh, is 100 years old that is currently making the fine accoutrements, hard pucks of soap. And I am such a huge fan of that base. That factory is owned by a bigger company and it looks like the, uh, that soap making business wasn't really able to sustain itself. The, um, it was a hundred year old building, really neat looking uh, soap manufacturing place I think in Germany and they made soap for other vendors as well some probably a lot larger than fine accoutrements in his write-up he said when long ago when he started it, those hard pucks he wanted to find somebody to make a good hard puck soap for him he couldn't find any vendors in America to do it any soap companies that could do it, but he found in Europe, he found a company. And what he was trying to duplicate was the experience he got, the performance he got from tobacco. Tobacco scented, powdery scented type soap from, I think, Germany. And he said in his article that he noticed he was able to actually use same soap base formulation as tobacco. Now I don't know the details of that in terms of if he purchased license or uh, you know if it was kind of informal or you know whatever but he actually said it wasn't just it wasn't similar to the tobacco formulation but it was the exact same formulation which is great because tobacco's a wonderful performing soap. So that made him happy because that's exactly the base that he was hoping to be able to produce. And, uh, and that's why we have all these awesome pucks of soap. Last year, maybe at the end of last year, we got notified that those, the single pucks of soap were being phased out. And so those ceramic bowls that he was uh, selling um, those got phased out as well. They can still be found at different vendors, but the uh, bowls were designed to be the permanent thing. 
and then you would buy the refill puck and pop it in when you needed a new soap. I loved it. I loved those ceramic bowls. I collected several. I even bought a backup or two when I realized that they were going to be discontinued. A uh, really big fan of those, and maybe that was a precursor. Maybe there was some, he did say he knew ahead of time that it wasn't a complete shock that the factory was going to shut down. And so he has been working on a, a new soap to replace the, the old base. I, I love how he patterned his uh, desire. The, uh, the soap that he wanted to be able to sell was the performance of tobacco. I'm, I love that so much. And so I kind of trust him that he's going to pick something that's, that's good. I hope he doesn't go the direction of Excelsior and Milk Steak and Noble Otter here because we've already got plenty of people doing that kind of formulation. I hope he sticks with the hard puck. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, so he, and so since he knew that the factory was going to shut down production, I think they said that the 17th was the when the last soap rolled off of the um, assembly line, um, November 17th of 2020. And they, uh, they said that, I read the German article, it may have been before, but uh, November 17th is, I think, when Mr. Fine made the announcement. And that may even be today. I think, I think it is. There were about 100 people working at that plant, and they did know ahead of time the company helped them to uh, fill out job applications and try to get them employed you know, once the factory shut down. Uh, but they said it was, I mean, it had been going for a hundred years. I mean, that's pretty crazy, right? So it was still kind of emotional for them, even though they saw it coming, even though it was definitely a, a known factor. But anyway, I look forward to seeing what Mr. Fine can bring to us. Uh, I heard the news and immediately jumped online to see to see if I need to fill any vacancies. I've got all the soaps from them that I'm interested in. And so I thought, well, you know, it's going to take me a year to run through a puck of soap, and I probably am not going to need any, but I went ahead and bought some anyway. Uh, so now I've got backups of my backups. So if Mr. Fine comes up with a, a puck that's just as good or better, then I <laughs> maybe I made a bad decision to stock up. But anyway, um, some of the people that I checked out were um, Small Flower. They had a few choices. Uh, the ra the, ra the RazorCompany.com. West Coast Shaving. I can't remember if Italian Barber had any. Obviously, Fine's website, but many of them are sold out. But you may be able to find one or two eBay has some. Some are overpriced on eBay, but there are some fair priced ones on eBay, including some that are just the hard pucks, and you don't have to buy the plastic tub. If you buy the plastic tub, you're looking at about $16 is retail, and then on eBay, you're going to see more than that. But also, you're going to see $16 for as long as those supplies last. The puck alone is was $12.50. So those are the standard prices. Um, so we'll see what happens. I've got plenty to last me a long time. Uh, the, it, I like the high quality lather. I like the slickness. Oh, the slickness. I don't need the soap to be a moisturizer. I've got a balm for that and I've got my own natural oils that do that anyway. Um, so I am sad to see, uh, see that plant shut down. Um, Here's the best for Mr. Fine. Um, and then something else um, that was much less important today on Reddit, Barrister and Man, the Will, the maker, the man behind Barrister and Man, said that uh, announced some of the new seasonals that he's going to put out. Instead of Nordost, which is an orange-scented soap that he put out last year, 
there was a supplier issue where he wasn't able to get the same quality, the same strength, the same type of um, fragrance oil or whatever from the same vendor that he did last year. And so he did, is not putting out Nordost again, but there's uh, another seasonal that's kind of foodish related uh, Eau Delight, I think. It's got some gourmand type Turkish delight hinted scents in it. And then he's bringing in a Soft Hearts Sandalwood. He said people have been asking for sandalwood and he's going to give them sandalwood. And I'm a big fan. If it's a smooth, kind of sweet sandalwood like Sterling has, I will be disappointed. But not surprised. Hopefully it's more woody. Um, so we'll see. His, his sandalwood in the lather base years ago uh, was too European. It smelled too much like perfume. Um, flowers and perfume and powder. I didn't like it. So we'll see. We'll see. I'll definitely buy it. Give it a chance because the soft heart base is nice. Um, and so we'll see if he can, uh, we'll see how the sandalwood works out. Um, so Will's got some new things and uh, Will's stuff is going to be available on Black Friday, the 27th of November, I believe. Another new guy, new scent that's coming out is called Valedictorian from Summer Break. And his base is really nice. Some cool blue owl artwork on the front. I'm more of a vintage kind of guy. I like the uh, kind of understated. I mean, this is kind of a modern look, but it is kind of a little bit understated. The cover art of the valedictorian is very kind of bright and almost a cartoonish kind of way. Um, but I'm probably going to buy it anyway because the Scent notes look really good. Kind of right along my line of uh, kind of manly, spicy, leathery kind of scent notes. All right, guys. Do I smell any grapefruit in this? I do. But only because I'm looking for it. I would not almost certainly not have been able to pull that out on my own without the help. Lavender. Lavender's pretty minimal. Probably a little bit less than the grapefruit, actually. Definitely got the cedar wood. Definitely got the aquatic, the water. Sandalwood. I'd got some woody notes, but I think mostly it was the cedar wood. Sandalwood, not very strong, pretty minimal. To, to my nose at least. And I don't know exactly what the ambergris smells like. It is often used in scents. Um, I had to look that one up a while back. It's made from some kind of whale output. I don't know exactly. I don't know if the whale is killed or milked or groped. <laughs> I don't know. Um, or if it's uh, something that they exude in the normal process, and so we just collect it and the whale is not harmed, that would be nice. Let's just pretend that's what it is. Anyway, um, I think that I like this scent. It's one that I'm not initially super fond of, but I think I like it. It's interesting. Not a whole lot other like it. So I'm going to shave with it again, give it another shot. Um, and even if I had to sell it to somebody else, I'm happy to uh, perform the charity duties and have some of my purchase go to the uh, Red Cross or the Fallen Firefighters um, just to try to help them out in some small way. All right, you guys, well, this has been a long video. We had a PSA in here about... Uh, about fine accoutrements there, so that, that kind of extended things a little bit. All right, I'm going to clean stuff up. So here is the beautiful handle from Bristle Brushworks. You can see we have a few outliers, and so more would be joining. 
Vem? Yeah, there's a little bit of clumping. So I wonder if after some uses, a little bit of gel might develop. But in general, I'm not seeing too much gel. Initially, this knot was compared to B4, and that attracted me to trying it because B4 is my favorite batch. But what this is missing, based on just two uses, mind you, is the softness of the tips of the B4. That's the big thing. It's also more dense, but that can't be held against the knot. It can't be held against the bristles. That's just because this is a thicker handle. This is a larger knot. So we will keep using it and watch what happens uh, to it before we draw a conclusion. So we did a 40 second load with four teaspoons of water used. It's possible it might have needed uh, another half teaspoon, but I think it's a pretty good ratio. And there we go. All cleaned up. So not quite the closeness that I wanted. Definitely have some moisturizing action going on here. Razor and blade, not a good choice. The scent on the soap is nice. It definitely wouldn't I definitely wouldn't mind it if I was you know stuck and that's the only one I had to use until it was done and uh, while initially I might think that I have a good bit more other uh, a good bit of soaps that I might like better than this one I could easily see myself in a few days wanting to return back um, because this is a, it's interesting and different like what happened with chasing sunsets from Storybook or yeah Storybook he used it liked it okay sorry and then a few days I wanted to go back to it and try it again so I did uh, so it might might end up to be a kind of a interesting favorite who knows all right well this is Sugar Daddy Shaves and that is today's video. Uh, huzzah for you guys who held in, held on for this long. Uh, Buzz used to have a sandwich and a drink while he sat back and uh, watched my videos. Well, this one, he's been able to have a sandwich and a drink and dessert and maybe another sandwich. <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, take care. I sure hope that this has been a, a video that has helped you guys out in some way. You take care. Have a good night. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves.